When I hear the word tourbillon, the first word I think of is expensive. Like this 350,000 Grand Seiko Kodo I reviewed recently. Today I'm reviewing a flying tourbillon that costs about a thousand US dollars. This is the Arcturus LC2 Vanda tourbillon, and it's one of the best value for money watches I've ever seen in person. I'll be telling you everything you need to know about this watch and whether you should buy one. This video is supported by Legacy Watch Co. If you're looking to buy or sell a watch, do reach out to us. Enjoy the video. The Tourbillon is a high complication that typically sits at the top of a brand's offerings and will cost six figures at minimum. So for a seven-year-old brand from Singapore to launch one as their second ever watch is crazy ambitious. But first, let's take a step back. Arcturus is a brand with humble roots, starting off as a passion project between two university roommates, Alexander and Satish. I had the pleasure of meeting these two passionate gentlemen for a chat, and they shared that the LC2 is a project that took four years to come to fruition. It's not just another low-effort homage to Beyond, but rather a superbly well-designed watch that reflects the passion of its creators and celebrates Singapore. To better understand, let's jump into the design of the dial. For Satish, his main theme was to create a highly layered design. The dial is lowest in the center, and progressively gets higher as you move towards the edge. First off, we get a cool rounded hour ring, with interesting cutouts for the Roman numerals to add depth. On top of this sits the minute ring, with a unique 12 hour marker. Look on the opposite side and we see how the minute track breaks off into a lower layer before meeting in the center at the Arcturus logo, which is actually the highest point of the dial. Playing with different angles and depths means that this dial is a three-dimensional treat for the eyes. And yet, the party tricks don't end there. One of my favorite details involves the small metal piece in the center depicting the Vanda orchid that inspired the watch. When the hollow hour hand passes by 12, it actually aligns perfectly with that small circular plaque. Is there any functional purpose to this decision? Absolutely zero. But in my eyes, it's that extra touch and thought, which reflects the love and effort that Alex and Satish put into the LC2. These small details they push for, such as the way the crystal is uniquely cut out to fit the case, it's a good reminder that this is a passion-driven project that took four years, which is honestly very refreshing. As far as dial options go, you get three options. White guilloche with a black hour track, aventurine, and malachite. I've historically been a big fan of aventurine because ooh, shiny. But in this case, I have to say that the malachite would be my top pick, even though green is not a color I'm a huge fan of. The aventurine is typically quite dark and only comes to life under bright lighting, but the malachite looks consistently good under most lighting. As for the white guilloche, I find that the black hour track makes it quite hard to see the Roman numeral cutouts. Yet, I'm sure that the high contrast panda color combo will appeal to some. Moving on, Alex shared that the LC2 incorporates a variety of different finishing to make it more visually interesting. The hour track is radially brushed, the tourbillon area and minute track is vertically brushed, and the thin bezel has a sunburst finish. This moves me on to the pseudo cushion case. Having experienced a load of luxury watches, something I dislike is cases that feel chunky. I'm going to offend many people with this opinion, but Lange is one of the brands that on average has the worst case design. Not only do their cases generally look the same, but they are also chunky like a hockey puck. The LC2 is thankfully the opposite. While it's by no means thin, coming in at 12.2mm in case height, this thickness is divided into several layers, with the key one being a 7.2mm mid case. This makes the watch feel a lot less thick than it actually is. Also, while I'm generally not a fan of cushion case watches like the VC1921 due to the squarish profile, the LC2 doesn't feel that bad due to how the case curves. 
Let's talk about the elephant in the room, or perhaps in this case, the panda in the room. The LC2 is able to offer collectors a flying tourbillon at this price range, thanks in part to the movement, which is a Peacock SL5200 from China. There's naturally going to be a stigma attached to the word China, or generally to watches made in Asia. As I learned from my Grand Seiko Kodo review, it's clear that there are still people who can't respect Seiko, even though it was the main cause of the quartz crisis that turned the Swiss watch industry on its head. For me, I personally couldn't care less that the LC2 uses a movement from China. Peacock is a brand that has been in operation for over 70 years, and Arcturus has meticulously tested the watch to ensure the movement works. Even if something should go wrong, there's a two-year warranty period, and Arcturus promises to cover 50% of all maintenance and repair costs for 10 years. But let's forget any concerns about reliability. The flying tourbillon in the LC2 looks great and is mesmerizing to stare at. Even the case back looks good, sporting a nice engraving of the Vanda Orchid. Does the LC2 have the fine hand finishing of a luxury tourbillon? Obviously not, but it is literally over a hundred times cheaper. Also, the LC2 is a watch that looks and feels far above what it costs. So how exactly does the watch feel in person? Alex and Satish wanted to make sure that the LC2 felt good from a tactile perspective. As a result, they went with a large onion crown that you'll typically find on pilot watches. The crown feels solid and is easy to operate. But most remarkably, the feedback you feel when winding the watch is great, which is by design. It's not as luxurious as a Rolex crown, but I will say it's miles better than this $250,000 VC Perpetual Skeleton I've been wearing for the past two weeks. Again, the fact that they even care about winding feedback when it's something that many luxury Swiss brands fail at is a reminder that the LC2 is a passion project by collectors who care. On the wrist, the LC2 wears great. I hinted at it earlier when talking about case design, but even though the watch measures 44mm by 12.2mm, it's still very wearable. The design is also quite versatile looking good on both rubber and leather straps. Overall, the LC2 is a watch that punches far above its price point and feels very complete as a design. I hope it comes through on video, but the watch is well thought out and you can tell that four years worth of effort have gone into this. As someone who primarily covers expensive luxury watches, where the change from one model to another is primarily case material or dial color, Reviewing the LC2 has been a very refreshing experience. It was also a privilege to hear about the backstory of Alex and Satish, their journey in creating the LC2, and the thought process behind various decisions. As a collector from Singapore, I'm very happy that the Lion City has produced such an awesome watch. For about a thousand US dollars, can you get much better? I think not. If you're interested in buying a LC2, check out the Kickstarter link in the description below. For avoidance of doubt, this is not a paid review, and the entire video has been my honest thoughts. If you enjoyed it, check out my other watch reviews and video podcast series. Thank you for watching.